Thanks for joining this session on planning the zero downtime life cycle of your service mesh. My name is Christian Posta, and I am the global field CTO here at Solo.io. I've spent a lot of my career helping organizations build scalable distributed systems, and since 2017, specifically working on service mesh technology, helping organizations navigate some of the complexities of choosing a service mesh deploying it, operating it in day two, and everything in between. And uh, I am writing the Istio in Action book for, with Man, uh, for Manning, and that should be out pretty soon. I think we're getting some of the last updates to the, to the publisher right now. But like I said, I, I work at Solo, and uh, I came over to Solo almost three years ago now to work on this application networking infrastructure based on Envoy Proxy. And you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see a lot of the service meshes are based on this, but uh, you know, there's a bigger story here around connecting things, especially in an enterprise environment, across different lines of business, across uh, different zones and infrastructure, from VMs to containers to uh, you know, on-premises and public cloud and everything in between. And so that's what we focus on at Solo. Um, we have a, a lot of expertise in this area in Envoy, in Istio, and uh, we've built our, our products to, um, to scale and to uh, work very nicely in, in enterprises. You can see here, we have, uh, we have a lot of expertise. This is just uh, some of the folks that we have working here at Solo. Niraj Podar just joined us uh, a few weeks ago. Lin Sun, both of them on the Istio TOC, Technical Oversight Committee, and many others that have uh, been involved in the community working with, uh, with Upstream as well as our, uh, our customers, some very large, uh, some of the largest deployments of service mesh in the world. And uh, we were just featured, I would like to point this out real quick, we uh, featured in the service mesh radar report where uh, you know, closer to the bullseye, closer to the middle here is uh, best. And you can see Solo.io, we've been uh, working very hard and um, you know that that shows in the in the analyst uh, observations of us as well. So let's get right into it. Service Mesh, as you've uh, you know, we've we've been doing these conferences for a while now, Service Mesh Con, and uh, the the folks that have been coming to the these types of talks are probably familiar with Service Mesh technology, and uh, it, it loosely defines as you know a, a framework that uh, deploys. So, and it allows you to offload application networking concerns from the application to a little agent or proxy that runs co-located with the application and uses some kind of control plane to manage the configuration and, and drive the, the, the policies and the, um, the behavior of the network as observed and, and enforced by the little sidecars or these sidecar proxies that live with the applications. The operators or the end users, they configure the control plane, control plane ends up configuring the data plane. Now, the service mesh is a very critical piece of application networking infrastructure when it's in place. As you can see, these proxies live on the data path with the application talking to the network, the requests are going through these L7, these layer seven proxies. And since that's the case, requests are flowing through these proxies, configuration, lifecycle upgrades, these types of things are uh, in incredibly important events and need to be planned for and uh, shouldn't be taken lightly. Because if you start to take down the request path between your various services, you start to see outages. And uh, that, that is not something we want, right? So, before we get into planning for the, you know, how, how you go about managing the life cycle of a service mesh, which is a very critical component in your, in your architecture, we should start by understanding some of the areas where the service mesh can fail and things to watch out for. So the first thing that we want to talk about is the request path and the configuration path. Right, so when applications are communicating with each other, the traffic is traversing these data plane proxies. The proxies are doing things like routing control, like security, transport security, 
maybe things like authorizations, whether traffic should be allowed or not, and uh, you know, collecting telemetry and so on. But as I mentioned earlier, that these proxies are driven by configuration from the control plane. And so one of the first failure areas that we'll take a look at is what happens when the proxies can no longer get configuration updates from the control plane. And in an upgrade, this is a very real scenario. So we got to explore this, uh, this failure uh, domain here. Um, now, ideally, this doesn't affect the request path. You just end up with stale configuration and you don't see new configuration or updates to the system that have happened since the communication went down. Now, modern proxies like Envoy proxy and so on can, can deal with this and are expected to deal with this. In fact, the model of configuration for Envoy was built specifically to be eventually consistent and can survive for some period of time in this particular state. So you might miss uh, updates to endpoints and, and so on, but the proxy can do things like outlier detection and kind of work around misbehaving endpoints until communication is reestablished. We'll take a look at some uh, uh, approaches for dealing with this and, and how to minimize this sort of, uh, this sort of communication failure. Another area that we want to look at is how does traffic get into the service mesh? Right, the service mesh, the proxies, they can do things like mutual TLS. They can do things like service to service authorizations and enforcing those types of policies. But somehow traffic has to get into the mesh before the mesh can uh, start to enforce these types of things. Some service meshes have a uh, a, a well-defined way for how traffic gets in through some sort of ingress gateway. Istio, for example, has, has this. Um, and you know, a, a failure area that we want to watch out for, especially when doing upgrades, is we don't want to take, take down the ingress points for, for how traffic gets into the service mesh. Now, another thing to also watch out for is the configuration domains. Uh, and, and scopes. So it, you can have, you want to watch out for global changes or global configurations that potentially upon an upgrade can take down the configuration of the data plane. And so this would impact the request path and whether services can communicate with each other. So you know, keep, keeping in mind, what is the scope of your configuration? What configurations are backward or forward, forward compatible? And, uh, and how to work around and, and at least uh, control the blast radius for these types of changes. Now, there's many other things. You know, those are, those are a few of the areas that we're going to explore today. But a service mesh is a critical piece of infrastructure that's likely highly integrated with other parts of your stack. So things like a uh, dedicated certificate authority for signing workload certificates or setting up edge ingress um, certificates, things like integrating with the rest of your observability stack, tracing and telemetry collection and so on. You know, things that don't immediately jump to mind in a, uh, you know, service to service communication runtime environment, things like CICD, where you might have automation around what configurations live on a cluster, for example, things like Argo or Flux, which, you know, we've seen can kind of fight you when you're trying to do an upgrade if it's not planned correctly ahead of time um, and cause some unintended uh, behaviors, as well as integration with maybe some external or existing API gateways that you will also need to take into account. So let's, t let's take a look at uh, a few of these uh, failure areas and see what we can do to help. Um, the first thing that we'll take a look at is getting traffic into the service mesh itself. As I mentioned, some service meshes have an out-of-the-box gateway that allows you to go from untrusted, un unknown to the mesh type traffic to trusted and, and, and inside the mesh, you know, ingress inside the mesh. Uh, ACO is one of, these, uh, one of these service meshes and that, that, that has an ingress gateway capability. So we, we want to separate out the, the life cycle of how we get traffic into the service mesh and the rest of the mesh. 
Now this can be done in a couple of different ways. One, maybe you have a completely separate ingress, maybe uh, use some, some different uh, technology, maybe not part of the service mesh, or you split it out into separate control planes so that the ingress can be operated and treated differently from the rest of the, of the service mesh traffic. Istio is a particularly mature implementation of a service mesh, and we've seen um, you know, this, this sort of model kind of baked into, but instead of, uh, you know, you have a few different options, but you can, you can do this through the operator and have different life cycles through the operator by setting up, let's say, uh, configuration just for the ingress and configuration just for the control plane have those separated out uh, com completely so that they can be um, updated, upgraded, and so on independently. Here's an example of how you might do that using the Istio configurations. On the left-hand side, we see configuration for the control plane. Note the bolded areas here. Um, you know, we're, we're just installing the, con the control plane piece by itself, no other pieces. And on, on the left side, on the right-hand side, we're installing just the uh, ingress gateway uh, component, nothing else. And so we're able to run these in conjunction and have separate life cycles at the, at the operator level. Now this will come in handy once we start to upgrade the rest of the control plane because we can do that independently of the, uh, of the gateway. So we can separate out the possibility of taking down traffic that's coming into the mesh from the uh, upgrade of the data plane inside the mesh itself. And so to minimize those, uh, those downtimes or those uh, you know, stale configurations um, and, and minimize the, the connection loss between the data plane and the control plane, what we want to do is try to update them both at the same time. But we want to do that in a controlled way. We want to do it using uh, tried and true patterns like canary releases. We want to avoid big bang upgrades or in-place upgrades that have the potential to, uh, to take down the entire system, even though they might have, you know, backward compatibility built into uh, into the implementation. So, for example, with um, with with your service mesh, with again using Istio as a, as an example, we can deploy a canary control plane and uh, not affect any of the the data plane traffic, whether at ingress or on the east west side. And from there, what we can do is slowly uh, introduce the, the relevant components. So in this case, we're going to introduce a, uh, an ingress gateway that's tied to the new control plane, the canary control plane. It won't take any traffic yet, but we're just we're going to start getting the pieces in place so that we can slowly and surgically roll the, uh, the, the, the data plane pieces. So in this case, we're starting to see um, you know, one workload move over to the new control plane. Everything still continues to flow. Traffic's fl flowing in through the load balancer and through the original, you know, the, the ingress gateways. And we're slowly rolling over the traffic. Now you can see more of those workloads and now even the ingress gateway is, um, is taking traffic and bringing traffic into the uh, various workloads. And then the more traffic we roll over to the new control plane, you know, the more that we get closer to shutting down and eliminating the, uh, the, the traffic through the older uh, control plane. And if at any point in this process we see, we see an issue, we can roll back and uh, go back to the, uh, the old control plane. So this, this provides a lot more safety and um, tries to work around and, and eliminate some of those areas for potential downtime. By, uh, by running things concurrently and slowly and methodically in a controlled way, rolling the traffic into the, the new version um, without doing a big bang or in-place uh, upgrade. The last thing that we'll talk about is limiting your blast radius when doing configuration, you know, well, taking into account configuration in a uh, in an upgrade scenario, so for example, um, scoping configuration to specific applications or in Kubernetes to specific namespaces is highly desirable. 
So that's, that's kind of step one, try to avoid large scale global configuration. In Istio, that means you know putting configuration into the Istio system namespace, which is an operator, or rather, you know, a, a platform team user uh, restricted namespace. We don't want everybody dumping their configs into here. Uh, kind of scope them down to their specific namespaces uh, where applications live, where you know you might have tenancy and ownership rules about that. Um, you can even use things in Istio specifically to scope it down. So when you deploy uh, configurations into Istio, the Istio control plane is watching all of those configurations across all the namespaces and trying to configure you know, the mesh um, globally. But what you can do in, in Istio, for example, is use the export to uh, field in the various uh, configuration objects like virtual service or destination rule. And so export to controls where those configurations get applied. So even if you deploy it in one particular namespace, you can say only export the config to this namespace, not to everything else. Um, if you left out the export to, then it would apply to all the namespaces, even if you scope it to a particular namespace here. So you have much more fine grained control over how the configuration is visible outside of a particular namespace. Now this export to is a, is a list, so you can be very specific about what namespaces should observe this particular con configuration. Um, but you know, no, narrowing those down and limiting those is uh, highly desirable. And keeping in mind where configuration could conflict with an upgrade. Like uh, in, in Istio, there's a break glass feature that allows you to override the capabilities of the underlying data plane in this case, uh, Envoy Proxy, with a, with a resource called Envoy Filter. All right, so Envoy Filter also has an export to field, which you can configure to scope this, uh, these configurations, these overrides to a specific namespace. But an even uh, more useful um, configuration here is focusing or specifying exactly what version of Istio that this global override should be applied to. Um, and, and, and making sure that this does not get applied. So if we were to upgrade to a new version, that it would only apply to the old, older version anyway. So, um, you know, these are, these are some of the, the failure areas and life cycle um, things that you should keep in mind when managing, operating a service mesh. At Solo, we've, we're working with some of the largest, uh, largest service mesh deployments in the world. If you're interested in um, seeing what we, more of uh, what we're what we're doing and working with our customers then uh, or, or building working on service mesh and building the products themselves please reach out we are hiring across uh, across the world as you can see our presence is global and we're hiring for um, people working in the field with the customers people writing the code in the back end um, everything sales uh, customer success everything in, in between so uh, i just want to thank you for joining this session Definitely check out uh, some of the YouTube channels that we have. Uh, so we, sh we share a lot about what we're doing with our customers. You can learn a lot about, about Istio, Service Mesh in general, Envoy Proxy, and uh, some of the innovative stuff that we are working on at uh, Solo. So thank you so much. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out and uh, look forward to the, uh, the rest of the track here at Service MeshCon. Thanks.